Alrighty, welcome back everyone. We just talked about Steve Sarkeesian and his conversation he had with Joel Klatt and how it really revealed a lot about what Texas is as a program inside and out. And I got even more impressed with what they're building over there in Austin after that conversation. But let's get into Brent Key and let's talk about his comments about Georgia and why I just love them so much. Um, but this is obviously a rivalry that Maybe some of you don't necessarily put a lot of stock in. Maybe some of you kind of, you know, sweep this one by the wayside. Obviously, with the past couple of years, it's had to compete with Ohio State, Michigan. So kind of fighting an uphill battle there. But this year will be on a Friday, which is awesome. Uh, kind of have a standalone little, uh, have a standalone game, excuse me. But uh, it was really interesting. Um, Brent Key was talking to someone over at the AJC and uh he was talking to Chad Bishop, an AJC reporter, and he said, there's nothing I hate more in the world when talking about Georgia. Um, it's probably the only thing that I hate. When I say hate, I like truly despise everything about, about it. I really do. That's beautiful. I got to be totally honest with you. That is absolute poetry because... I, and I have some, you know, firsthand knowledge of this rivalry, and it, you know, holds a very special place in my heart because I grew up a Tech fan. Um, I, I went to a number of Tech games when Paul Johnson was the head coach, watched the triple option ran by guys like Joshua Nesbitt and Justin Thomas, and it was a thing of beauty. I, I won't lie to you. They pulled off a couple upsets against Georgia that I was very, very happy about. But then I went to college, and I went to college at Georgia. So I've been on both sides of this uh, rivalry. It's been a little bit weird, uh, I, I won't lie to you, and taking a little bit time to for my mind to adjust that I am now rooting for Georgia in that game. But I will tell you, this game has an energy that I don't think everyone fully understands in college football. Obviously, it's not the closest rivalry in the world. In fact, it's one of the ones in the Power Five that is a little bit not close as of right now. There's a, there's a gap forming. There's no two ways about that. And uh, in fact, Georgia is, uh, I believe, two wins away. Yes, two wins away from matching the longest uh, drought for one single team, uh, which was actually Georgia. Uh, Georgia Tech beat them uh, 12 times in a row back in like the 40s, 50s, and it was called the drought by UGA supporters. So if that happens over the next uh, two years, obviously it's not going to be the most intense rivalry in the world. But there's a juice around this one, and it's the reason that a lot of rivalries in college football are special, and it's because every day when I, you know, woke up, I woke up and, you know, I, I was born and raised uh, about 10 minutes outside downtown Atlanta, was a big Georgia Tech fan, woke up every day, walked down the street, and saw about 10 Georgia flags all around me, and it made me just that more angry about that game, just that more excited about that game, and it added a certain... A certain aspect to that game that was just special, and I think that's what made co uh, college football rivalries that special. Is there's proximity here, you know? Uh, Texas, Texas A&M is a great example of. You walk down the street in pretty much any city in Texas, you're gonna find both those flags on that street, and those people are not necessarily going to be the most friendly. Um, now, I I'm sure they'll be more than cordial and not necessarily go at each other, but they're not necessarily going to love the colors that they're wearing. I'll, I'll put it that way. Um, Ohio State and Michigan are not too far apart. There's fans in either one of those states that absolutely um, interact with each other. Florida State and Florida is another great one where you're going to have some overlap, and it adds to it. It, it makes it even that much more fun, and I think it's going to be something that, frankly, over the last couple of years in college football have kind of dwindled in my eyes. I don't know if anyone else has seen this as well, but it just feels like the aggression around some of these games has just taken maybe just a notch or two down. Um, and I don't know what the reason for that is. I don't know if it's maybe the transfer portal. You know some of the guys on the other side of the field. You know the recruiting world has gotten bigger and bigger, so you meet more guys in high school that end up going to maybe one of your rivals and you're, you know, a little bit chummy before the game. Maybe the coaches come from the same coaching tree and they have history and um, have that long conversation before and seem to be really good friends. I don't like that. I got to be totally honest with you. I like the Brent Key approach. I, I like the one where you hate everything about that program. You hate the colors. You hate the way that they take the field. You hate their jerseys. You hate every little thing that you can about that opponent. Now, this shouldn't lead to, you know, you trying to injure the opponent or do anything insane. I'm not necessarily uh, saying that, but 
there needs to be an intensity on that field. I need the two teams meeting at mid uh, at midfield and being face to face and screaming at each other and just going at it right before the game. I, I need all of that energy in that stadium because I think we can all agree when that happens, that stadium is on fire from start to finish. Uh, it doesn't matter what the game is. It doesn't matter the venue they're going to buy in. It's just going to be an incredible atmosphere almost start to finish. It was that way with UGA and Tech for a very long time and still is. I agree, you know, George Pickens and Trace Willing got really into it a couple of years ago and George Pickens came on the better side of that. There's no two ways about that, but there is still some of this hate out there. There is still some of this juice. I mean, I, I, the biggest one that I can remember really was Jim Harbaugh versus Ryan Day for a number of years where Jim Harbaugh was taking subtle shots at Ryan Day, saying he was born on third base, little things like that, and it it created an energy around that game where you knew even the coaches didn't like each other, even the guys that aren't lacing him up today didn't like each other, and that's college football to me. Um, that's the energy that college football is meant to have. I understand, you know, you don't want this to get too aggressive or any players to throw punches or anything like that, but... I do want that intensity. I do want jawing after the play. I do want that. Uh, Ohio State and Michigan meeting at midfield and kind of going at it a little bit. I love the video of, uh, I believe it's Ohio State walking out, or maybe it's Michigan walking out of the tunnel, and the other one is just barking at them from their uh, uh, locker room. And that is a beautiful sight. Everyone, when they see that video, absolutely loves it. Oklahoma and Texas is a great example of when you get in that stadium, you can be shoulder to shoulder with the person that is rooting so aggressively against your team that it is it sickens you. And it's a beautiful thing in college football where you don't really have it anywhere else. Uh, I believe, I will say, if you get over to Europe and see some of those soccer matches, it gets pretty intense, I won't lie to you. But in uh, American sports, there's nothing really like it. Um, you know, the NFL has some good rivalries. The NBA has some ones here and there. But there's nothing like rivalry weekend in college football. There's just nothing that even really comes close in my mind. You have the Iron Bowl where you know these teams hate each other. You know these teams have families that are divided across Alabama where half went to Auburn, half went to Alabama, or half went to Florida State, half went to Florida. There's a beauty in college uh, sports that has been going away just a little bit, you know, has been kind of dwindling with all of the conference realignment and some teams moving around, you know, uh, Bedlam is not being played this year, which is a travesty uh, and something that absolutely needs to get worked out, and hopefully it will, but there are certain things that have been taken from us. I'm not going to act like, you know, Rivalry Weekend is exactly how it was before, but it's going to be beautiful nonetheless, and it will be even more beautiful if throughout the season, you know, a coach gets on a podium maybe at media days or maybe after one of the other games and just takes a subtle jab. It doesn't need to be anything aggressive. You know, Jim Harbaugh played off that uh, born on third base comment pretty uh, smoothly, so I, I think it can happen where it can be a little bit, you know, tempered. It doesn't need to be outright aggressive or anything insane. But I love the energy. I need the energy, in fact. I need these guys hating each other 365 days a year. And then on a leap year, you add one more to that. Um, I think there needs to be this energy around these games because they are circling them. Um, it, if you think Texas and Texas A&M aren't circling that last game, you're crazy. Uh, if you think Alabama is not making sure that that last game is taken care of and Auburn isn't trying to ruin Alabama's season as they've done a number of years in the past, you're crazy. College football has a certain ability about it where these kids can be from all over the country. Um, they can be from California and go to Florida State. They can be from Montana and make their way down to Georgia. The second they put on those colors and they see a Georgia Tech helmet or they see a Florida helmet or they see anyone wearing the wrong colors, they're going to hate them. It's just something that happens. I don't know if it's something they put in the water on these universities. I don't know, but I love it. It's college football in its purest form, and Brent Key is the exact person that I want to be leading this because he is hard-nosed. He is aggressive. He was an offensive lineman for Tech, so he played in these games. Kirby Smart played in these games. There's an energy around some of these rivalries that is unmatched across sports, if you were to ask me. And I think it all culminates on that last weekend, but it could be, you know, a, a steady buildup all year. And just all these different, you know, headlines come out about a jab to one direction and then a jab right back. And 
it would just add to that that game in sat on Saturday in the last week of the season. So I love Brent Key for saying this. Frankly, I love his energy in general. I think he is. If you're talking about football guys, that might be at the very top of the list. If I'm being totally honest, and I think. His hate for Georgia is not going anywhere. Um, he will die with that hate. I can almost promise you that. It doesn't matter if he beats them the next decade or he gets you know blown out the next decade. He's going to hate that team until the day he dies, and that is a beautiful thing about college football. So that was kind of a weird diatribe about how hate is good, um, not in all facets of life, obviously, but if we're talking about rivalry weekend in college football, I want every bit of it you can give me. So I hope that's something that kind of comes down the pipe. I hope, you know, Sharon Moore picks up where Jim Harbaugh left off with Ryan Day. I hope a lot of different things uh, kind of bubble up under the surface around these games. But we'll take our second break here. And when we come back, we're going to talk about the Elite 11 camp. There is a ton of really talented kids going out to Los Angeles to compete to see who's the best to uh, compete to see who uh, is going to lift that trophy at the end of the day. And It's a really, really fun event every year. So we'll break it down, break down all of the quarterbacks that'll be there and some quarterbacks that will not be there, unfortunately. Um, And I'll break down who I think might just take home the MVP this week. So uh, stick with us and we'll be right back with that. 